Welcome newcomers to Movie Fuse, the show that lets you decide some of the biggest debates in movie history. Today I square off Disney's big three new princess films for the new generation and you vote on the winner. If you've been a subscriber to Feud Nation for a while now, you know exactly why this episode exists. Let's feud! Lots of plucky dreamers here. Rapunzel has been stuck in a tree house for the first quarter of her life, but that hasn't stopped her from being a lovable, kind-hearted young lady. Elsa and Anna also know what it's like to be a recluse, being trapped in a castle ever since their parents vanished out at sea. Anna is very similar to Rapunzel with her chipper attitude and wide-eyed excitement, while Elsa is a bit closer to a real-world woman. Distant, cold, beaten down by typical issues like what to wear or which ice sculpture to create. Moana's the new girl in class and she fits right in. A brave, strong woman who has to take care of the island and her people. Can we talk stupid sidekicks? Thanks. Rapunzel wins this department as hers are awesome. Maximus the horse is my favorite part of the movie. He's constantly hunting down a thief named Flynn Rider. A Han Solo-ish character who will eventually team up with Mandy Moore's Rapunzel. Pascal is a cute little chameleon that makes quirky faces. And that's really all he does. Frozen gives us Olaf. Love him or hate him, he's a pretty big part of the flick. Constantly joking about how much he loves the summer and just being a bit dense when it comes to common knowledge things. There's a reindeer that does stuff too. If I seem a bit checked out, it's because I've talked about Frozen like 20 times on this channel. Maybe if kids showed even a slight interest in other movies that aren't superhero films or animated kids flicks, I wouldn't have to keep going back to this well. <laughs> Let's continue! Moana has a mentally challenged chicken that does mentally challenged chicken things, which include, but aren't limited to, pecking things that shouldn't be pecked, eating things that shouldn't be eaten, walking off stuff, falling off stuff, looking dumb, getting head stuck in stuff. The kids laughed every single time. So I guess it did its job. This isn't Shakespearean written script work here, but it's doing what it needs to do. I, I guess. I mentioned Flynn already. He's my favorite of the male protagonists. Kristoff's the worst, and I hate his dumb Sven impression. Get out with that. Get. I quite enjoyed Dwayne Johnson as Maui, the demigod with the magical hook. This allows him to transform into various creatures like birds and whales. My favorite is the half-man, half-shark combo. The villains are a mixed bag here. Tangled has a far more traditional baddie, Mother Gothel, trapping young Rapunzel in a tower just so she can stay young forever. Elsa's kind of the villain in Frozen. Accidentally speaking. Since she can't control her powers, she inadvertently causes the town of Arendelle to fall under an unending winter. I'm from Minnesota, so that just seems like a first world problem. Grab a coat! A third act plot twist reveals another bad guy lying in the weeds. I dare not spoil that event though for the three of you who are for some reason watching this and haven't seen Frozen. You're welcome. Maui. Moana's is new as I make this video, so I won't give much away, but I really like the route they went with the antagonist here. The demonic lava monster is a sight to behold, and the final battle takes a very interesting twist. There are plenty of other notable characters in all three films, which I'm sure will come up more organically in the next round or two. So let's press forward. Let's keep going with this. Young woman feels like she has the potential to be much more than she currently is, but due to circumstances beyond her control, she doesn't get the opportunity. Fortunately, our hero is strong and independent and able to rise above the challenges thrown in front of her, overcome the obstacles she's given. She meets a man along her journey who's going to help her out. She also teams up with some crazy characters, some side antics ensue. She sings a song, a tale of hope and wonder and magic, and she eventually will defeat the evils that are present in her distant future. If this sounds like the plot of all three films, it's because it is. It's a template Disney has, and they nail it to a T, and they only seem to be perfecting their wine. That fermentation process is, is ripe for the taking. I have no idea how wine's made or any of the real terminology. I'm just throwing shit out. Sorry for swearing, Mom. Frozen is by far the oddest of the bunch in terms of story structure and basic plot elements. Elsa's powers appear to stretch beyond just controlling the cold weather, and it was clear based on early trailers that she was supposed to be a much darker villain originally. This made the final product feel a bit disjointed, especially when she conjures a giant snow creature to kill her sister. What? 
Tangled is the most straightforward of the group, which sees Gothel pursuing her escaped prisoner and Flynn Rider as they attempt to get back to the castle. It's full of great moments, such as the Maximus Flynn battles, a bar full of thugs, complete with a dance number, and an emotional chase through a quarry. Moana really surprised me with the quality of its storytelling. The ocean was where she belonged. She just wasn't sure exactly what that meant until she started listening to her crazy grandma. I like that the movie doesn't rush through the opening act, instead giving us a good 30 minutes to get to know her family and culture. Frozen brushes through all the setup and nuance in like five minutes. A cup of coffee, you're done with it. All three films see our princesses grow by learning to embrace powers, listen to their heart, or see past the flaws. I, I share a lot of the same challenges that they do, being a young, white male living in America. The struggle is real. See the line where the sky meets the sea and it calls me And no one knows how far it goes Why, Trish? I'm singing my heart out up here! What could possibly be more important than this beautiful ballad I'm giving to my audience? Else. Elsa's not a, a princess, she's a queen. Oh, okay. The music in all three are fantastic and certainly up for debate as to which one contains the best. Tangled has a nice variety of songs. The opening, Where Does My Life Begin, is my favorite, but there's a fun bar song, a beautiful song about seeing some lights, and Mother Knows Best is deliciously dark. Deliciously dark. Okay, you know I was gonna read that line off the prompter, Sharon. Why are you doing this to me? Why are, you, why are you doing this? Those charming Frozen gals give us a smattering of jams, such as the insanely popular Let It Go, the inspirational For the First Time in Forever, and the bubbly Love is an Open Door, while songs like Olaf's In the Summer and that one by the Troll family are throwaway. Space fillers with little substance. Mona may not have the sheer volume of songs that Frozen does, but it's got some good quantity in there some bigly quality. We Know The Way is a powerful number, but man, oh man, is How Far I'll Go amazing. Dwayne Johnson puts out a song. He's the PlayStation 4 slogan of actors. He only does everything. And here he is once more showcasing range. Shiny and An Innocent Warrior are the other two big song sequences. If you want to talk about the visuals in these movies, they're all strikingly good looking. It's like sitting in front of a mirror for six hours. Confidence. Subscribe. Ice, snow, storms, forests, islands, oceans, volcanoes, towns, castles, peoples, etc. are all colorful and vibrant and perfectly captured. It's apples to apples and really comes down to the personal preference. I've spent enough time on this. I sadly could have just put the three posters up for four minutes and called it a day. Got the same amount of views and recognition. Let's move on on that sour note. I remember when Disney decided to call it quits on hand-drawn animation and move over to the modern computer era. It was a tough time, it was dark times, and I thought for sure Disney was going to fall on their face. Thankfully, the House of Mouse has proven me wrong for a decade now and continues to impress. I've given you my two cents on these flicks and now it's your turn. Vote for your winner, comment, and remember, this is more than just reviews, this is movie feuds. How long is it going to take for the frozen is garbage comments to roll in? Let's find out together. I'm excited.